watching Talking About Orcs. This episode of Talking About Orcs, we're going to begin talking about painting orc boys. Orc boys aren't that hard to paint, but the point is, though, you have a lot of them to paint. So I'm trying to give you some ideas to get the process done as quickly, quickly and painlessly as possible. I mean, if you're going to try and build an entire orc army of uh, painting contest winning caliber, obviously this isn't going to apply, but if you're trying to get out 100 models onto the table, that looks decent on a table. You know, probably a good uh, tabletop quality. Isn't hard to hard to achieve. You just have to um, plan. So what I've done here, I'm going to skip the boring point parts of base coating an orc. Uh, but I wanted to talk about uh, techniques and um, I said planning. First of all, so this is I, this is obviously a shooter boy, and you see I assembled it without the arm. What I did do though is when I was assembling them, I don't know if you can be able to see this or not, but I scratched uh, markings into the base, and then for each one of those I matched up to the arm where it matches it, where it meets to the body with the same marking, so I can. After everything's painted, I can get the arms and boys matched back up again without having to worry about fitting. So again, that's just some little advanced planning. For brushes, the three brushes I use almost exclusively. Um, I use a Citadel uh, standard brush, a Citadel fine detail brush, and the Army Painter extreme detail brush. And I can pretty much get everything done with these three. So when it comes to planning out your orcs, there are several areas where you can mix things up and give yourself some, give your uh, army some variety and help you out on the tabletop by keeping uh, units uh, distinct enough where you don't have to worry about mix, uh, confusing which models go where. Uh, the main areas on the orc boy, first is the pants, the shirt, and you have the straps. I always refer to these as straps. You call them belts or whatever you want. You got boots. You got metal pieces. And you got the fur around on these kind of helms here. And you of course will have the top knot head too, which I don't use because I hate it. And you also have on every on a bunch of arms. A lot of arms will carry these kind of um, wraps or buckles or something like that. And lastly, which I don't have any of right now, but there are hands that have um, fingerless gloves. So, and then, of course, we have more uh, straps right there on the barrel of the gun. But the thing is, there are a lot of areas on the orc where you can paint them different colors to get different units. This is Termary Brown. Dark Angels Green are the colors I'm using for this particular unit. But again, by mixing up the colors, the shirt and pants, all mine are always the same, but you can always even paint those different colors, the torso and the pants, the legs different colors, boots different colors, and of course the straps different colors, and that's and then lastly of course the base rim can be a different color, and that's how you can keep your units apart. Uh, like my main units are going to be snake bite leather and blood red. Or my shooter boys are bestial brown and regal blue, and so on and so forth. And this is one of only two units that have painted boots. Most of my boots are black. And of course, I like this particular model because it has these little like wraps around the top of the boots. This is the only pair of legs that has something like that. So I usually put those a different color too. So when I'm when you're painting the orcs, you have a good selection of browns and grays and tans available, so you can mix up the straps and the, the wraps on each individual model. So I like to keep you know, bestial brown, snake bite leather, scorch brown, graveyard earth, dark flesh. Uh, I don't use vermin brown because I, I hate it the way it comes out. Um, and then there's you know Kermary brown. All those colors just keep a variety at hand and you can mix up so they're not so, they're, so you do get some variety in and among the unit as well. So, and then when you're planning out, you can, you know, plan, you know, I'm going to have this unit, these colors. So if you have a, that plan ahead of time, you can differentiate your units as you paint them. 
um, which really helps on the tabletop. So on this one, I was obviously already been base coated because base coating is really not that exciting. I have autofocus off of camera, so if I get out of focus, it's my fault. Uh, because uh, so so I very carefully, I usually do the creamy brown first, the base color first. Then I do the straps. Then I do the the goblin green on the skin. I haven't gotten to the skin yet, but then I do the skin base. And then I do all the bolt gun on all the metal pieces, and then I'll take finish off with the boots. And then, as I, and then I'll do around, go around, and do all the straps. And that's how I get the. Uh, and then, of course, you have to go back over and get some any touch-ups done. Now that's the usual order I use for painting, for base coating. Of course, but this kind of base coat is, of course, only one way you can do it. Uh, there's other techniques, including dry brushing. You can just dry brush over black, with with colors. Uh, but I'm not going to be really going over different techniques. Um, this is just going to be a base coat and a wash style paint job. So I'm going to go on to the next step with this one in just a second. Uh, when we're talking about volume of guys, obviously going to be doing assembly line painting, and that's pretty much what this is, even though I only did one at a time. Do you want to be able to break up your painting into uh, decent sized batches that you personally can handle. Me, I do five models at a time. Uh, for painting, I've gotten, I've got, of course, 20 of these guys done from the previous units. The unit has 20 done, so I'm doing 10. So I'm doing two batches of five, and any more than that, I think, I've done it before, and it's really hard, especially when you're doing step by step. I end up doing, you know, the some step on some guys first, and then going on and on. So it's even if I'm doing more than one, more than five at a time, I still end up basically doing five steps at a time on each one. So you want to get them down into a manageable batches. And that's manageable for you. Because if you don't want to keep doing the same thing so many times that you just can't do it anymore. So that's why I do, you know, the five Kermie Brown coats and then the five sets of straps. And then the five skins. And the five sets of bulk in. Then I can wash them and move on from there. And it also gets you a sense to accomplishment. You get you may not get as many done at a time, but you can say, look, this guy's done now. He is done. This guy just needs basing, and he's done. I can get to a finish point with the models sooner, get that sense of accomplishment, and get more inspiration to continue. So, yeah, that's it. That's all I've got to say on that is orcs are easy to paint. They really are because they're so organic. They have such nice um, sculpts that the washes uh, really make uh, the models pop without too much effort but of course there is always the options of going much more detailed if you want and there's more than one uh, color to pick because when you're picking your colors that you like and if you're planning on washing them you also have to account for what they look like after they're washed uh, so the best way to do that is just take some spare sprue and paint on the color and then paint on the wash and different washes and see how it affects the colors and keep going until you get a good combination that you enjoy. So for this first step here I'm going to take some bad out black and my standard brush and I'm just going to give this a heavy black wash over um, everything that's not skin. And the main thing you have to remember is to get everywhere. I get, I get all the boots, I get all the metal pieces some of which I will go back over with different washes later because you can actually change uh, wash over the black wash with some effectiveness so if I go over the, the metal pieces like here on the back uh, with sepia later it will in fact look like sepia not just black and if you get some wash on the skin don't worry you can just go back over it again before you wash the skin Again, everywhere. You want to try to avoid getting it on the skin, of course, especially in the neck. The neck is by far the hardest part of the orc to paint, and it's really not a bad idea to keep the head off when uh, you're doing the when you're painting. Um, I really didn't have that option because I didn't assemble these guys. Uh, these were already assembled by Jeremiah Drig, 
So all I did was pop the arms off to uh, turn them into shooter boys. And whatever glue he used is really hard to get off, so I didn't even want to try and take the heads off. Uh, but I really do prefer painting them with the heads off because it makes the neck a lot easier to paint along with the straps along the side of the head. You know, there's a lot less interference. So that's it. Just give it a good heavy wash of Bad Ab Black. Well, that's almost too heavy. I'm going to have to thin my paint out and my wash out. Go back over here. I'm going to reduce the amount of Bad Ab Black on here. It's actually almost too much. And the nice thing about Bad Ab Black, it will actually dry a little bit lighter than what it looks like. See, I got some wash on the green. So before I go over the green, I'm going to have to fix that. That's no big deal. This is only a base coat. Which is why I do the skin second. Also, if you get the green wash on the black, that really doesn't show up very well. And I'm also going to wash this little area here on the head to give, and that will be, this is a scorch brown by the way on that, which will be the basis of a brown one. Okay. Make sure we get everywhere. There's nothing worse than a little unwashed spot on New York. Okay. So, yeah, that's it. So I'm going to put that aside and let it dry.